So I just want to give everybody an update kind of where I'm at with the build. We've gotten quite a bit of rain here in Arizona over the last two weeks. It finally cleared up. Got some nice days over the last two, three days. Um, I didn't really film much. I wanted to try to get the exterior done here. So I got all the trim installed and I got marker lights all installed, fenders. So the trim, uh, it's made by Rec Pro. I'll leave a link in the description. So I was able to get that installed and then a vinyl insert to cover all the screw holes. Got caps on the end, got them caulked up pretty good just to make sure it's weather tight. So in between the trim and the panels there is a butyl tape. So this is like a 90 degree angle trim, corner trim. And then here on the bottom is a flat trim. Um, marker lights using Technic <coughs> three quarter inch marker lights here. One on the bottom, one on the top. So on the front of the trailer, amber. And then back here on the rear, same thing but in red. One on bottom, one on top. Um, got the Overland Vehicle Systems 270 degree passenger side awning. I'll have to do a video showing that open. But that covers all the way up to about right here in front of the trailer. And it goes all the way around and covers the back side. So fenders are installed. Uh, one thing I did notice, you can notice the gap here on the back. I think with the weight of the camper over the last month or so, this, <clears throat> the rubber rubber springs on the timbrens are settling. So that gap kind of closed up. So what I'm probably gonna do, I'm gonna wait and see, because I'm a big guy, I weigh, I weigh about 350 pounds and I can jump on this and this won't, this doesn't hit the tire but what i might do is just trim this fender out a little bit more and then on this uh, bar here i might just cut the face off here in the bottom and then just weld a flat piece of flat stock in so and then just kind of triangulate this tube just to gain more clearance um if you're gonna do this, maybe start with more fender gap than I did. What I really should have done is I should have took these fenders, cut them in half, lengthened them to make them wider. But I don't know why I didn't do that. I should have done that to start with, but I didn't. Uh, to protect the inside of the fender well here, I'm probably gonna do some sort of bed liner, just black bed liner on that aluminum composite <clears throat> not sure exactly what I'll do yet my goal right now is just to get this uh, street legal get all the lights everything so I can go get it registered that way I can finish up the or start on the interior give you an idea it's a little dark in here but here's the interior so what you see on the walls is the wiring for the the marker lights and I did leave myself enough slack so if I ever had to change the lights I can pull it out and wire in a new light but then it goes through a hole with the grommet and then caulked in the floor to connect underneath to that weather pack uh, connection that I put Put in when I or did the trailer wiring. Now around back here, I do got the three ID lights there, and then just give you an idea here what I did. Now that one's kind of hard to see. I'll show you this one, so you can see there. 
basically drilled a half inch hole, put a half inch rubber grommet, put my wiring through the floor, and then use Sikaflex caulk to seal it. So when I put my foam board in, this will fold down. The foam board will kind of go around it. And then the flooring, I'll make a notch for the wiring to stick out. So this will all be hidden behind the wall and everything. Yeah, that's the interior as of right now. And then the rack system, you can see how it's just clamped to the uh, roof rack. Over here, I just got this jack kind of hanging here loosely. So during the rain storm that we had, or not really a storm, but it just rained constantly for like every day for a couple, like two weeks. This thing was really weather tight except for this door. So I'm working on resealing the door. So this was the weather sealer or weather seal on it. And this stuff leaked. So basically the water came in off the top and just ran down the inside of the door here. So on Amazon, I ordered this type, got that installed, so it just clips to the door and then it's got this rubber bulb here to seal it. And now it's kind of, kind of tight. And then these latches are a little too short. So these are seven eighths in length, I need one inch. So I ordered some more latches. I should be getting them tomorrow. This one down here, this one had a lock, a key lock. I'm not gonna put keys on this. I'll just use these thumb latches and be able to, so once it, I get the correct latches, it'll make it easier to close this door and seal it. The other thing I gotta do is caulk these holes. So I got this door here compartment door from I think is affordable RV parts they sell like scratch and dent type products I didn't notice it when I bought the door that these holes there's a hole here and a hole here so even with this door closed and sealed those holes are still exposed to where water can get in the frame of the door so I'll go ahead and caulk those up just to make sure water can't get in there um, for the side steps here, what I think I'm going to do is just use, I got a, I bought one extra sheet of this 5x10 uh, composite panel. So what I might do for now, just so I have them there and they serve kind of as, I guess mud flaps too, in a sense, to keep dirt from spraying up here, is I might just use that aluminum composite here bolt it in, paint it black here and on the front until I decide what I'm gonna do. I wanna use some aluminum. I wanna figure out how to get like black anodized aluminum, diamond plate, but that stuff's not cheap. So for the meantime, I might just use this aluminum composite, see how it works. Um, up on the roof, I think I already showed this, but I'll show it here again. So I got my solar panels installed, they're energy panels. So I got three 100 watt panels. They're not hooked up yet. So you can see the wiring's just sitting there. I got my max air fan. So when it did rain, I had this trailer sitting pretty level and it started pooling water up here. So one thing I had to do was kind of kneel the trailer down, angle it down, and it drained just fine. So again, interior, this is from the driver's side. I did get my uh, flooring in. So this is what I'll be using. Just a vinyl wood grain looking floor. So I'll be installing that here hopefully in the next week or two. 
Before I put that down, I'll do one inch foam on the floor before I put the flooring in. Let's see what else I got <coughs> got done here. The toolbox, I just got it temporarily bolted in with two bolts. So my wiring for the trailer, lights and everything is just hanging right there. <coughs> I need to decide if I'm going to mount it like my junction box and my breakaway kit in inside the toolbox or on the outside. I'm not sure how I want to do that yet. You know, I'd appreciate any thoughts or suggestions on that. Or if I mount it underneath the toolbox, kind of hidden. But then again, it could hit stuff, road debris, things like that. The other thing I want to do is the front of this trailer, I mean, it's a five foot tall wall that toolbox there's still a lot of room here so I was thinking of doing is building like a, a rack to come across maybe with like a three four inch lip on it to where you can put you know small camp stove maybe a small ice chest lawn chairs anything like that and just have some extra storage up there not quite sure if I want to do that, I'm kind of leaning towards it. If you guys got any suggestions or ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd appreciate any input. If I were to do that though, my thought is, is off the tongue here would be to come up here, back here, and then off the tongue up here come up you know miss the toolbox you'll still be able to access it i was thinking just using one inch square tube because i still got plenty of it and then just come in high enough to where when this lid's all the way open that rack is would be about i don't know yay height which to me is right about my neck height maybe chest height where you'd still be able to easily access it put stuff up there let, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below on how you you would do that or if there's something I've done on this build that maybe you would have done different. You know, maybe it's not too late for me to fix something if you guys see something I may have done wrong. Uh, as of right now with the rain we had, I know that was a good water test. And this thing, like I said, held... Held water, I was able to go in there with a flashlight one night when it was raining and just look for water and the only water I could see coming in was from that door right there. So, my next step right now is just finish up the wiring so I can get it, make it towable. I'll finish painting that tow bar. Make it towable so I can go get it registered that way I can legally take it down the road. And the reason I want to get it towable before I do the interior or get it registered is because one of my family members, they have a nice shop for woodworking. And I figured doing all the woodworking on the interior would probably be easier to do it someplace where some, someone has all the proper tools. I don't have really good woodworking tools here, so... But anyways, I appreciate you listening to me. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated, subscribe. If not, that's okay. But I appreciate you watching and listening. And I will keep posting videos. I've been enjoying this build so far. So if you're thinking about doing one, I would say do it. You know, this may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, this thing looks really nice. I'm really happy with it and how it's turning out. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and I will post, uh, probably the next video will be either if I build a rack here or on the interior. So, 
we'll see what happens next but thanks for watching